Martin, Martin Minchuk, um, one of the uh, CDP strategists here at Kini. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about data. What you get there? Yes. Um, but I'm going to start with um, a couple of different questions. So, uh, who do we have in the room? Do we have any techies web just by raising a hand? Who's a techie? Okay, a couple of techies. Do we have any marketing people? Any marketing? Awesome. Awesome. That's very awesome. So, for marketing people, first of all, um, we need to up your skills a little bit, um, technical, uh, technical skills. So, you can understand how we get the data, what do we do with the data, what can we do with the data, and how you can ask the data team in their own language um, uh, what, what can be achieved for your use cases. And for the techies, we really need to stop throwing all those diagrams at marketing people. Okay, this is too much, this is too much for me, even though I'm a techie as well. Um, so hopefully today we're going to go through that journey and see how we can combine all our powers, just like Captain Planet, no, I don't know if anyone remembers that, um, and see how we can create those use cases together. So my name is uh, Marcin, I'm also Polish, just like my colleague uh, Krzysztof, with a difficult name. Um, my mom was always saying, you don't have any squiggles in your name, so you'll be fine. And uh, my name uh, got, always uh, gets misspelled. Um, so I always, um, uh, uh, I always spell it for everyone. So it's M-A-R-C-I-N-D-E-N-I-S-I-U-K. Okay. So you can remember that for the future reference. Um, uh, when I... Uh, I grew up in a, like a small town in Poland, so um, uh, my mom is a very strong uh, Eastern European uh, woman. So if you had all your fingers attached at the end of a, of a day, that was a success, you know, parental success. Uh, it was great. And when I, um, when I told her I want to immigrate abroad, I want to see the world and get a better job, she, the only thing she said was, don't forget the rubbish because it's a bean day today. So, um, you know, it was her approach. Uh, good for me. Um, so, um, before, before we move with the story, um, I wanted to also uh, check with you, what is the most important thing, you know, given the subject of this talk? What is the most important thing in, a, uh, in an NCDP project? Do we know any answers? Data, isn't it? Yeah. What is the first thing that we start with? Okay. What is the first thing that we start with in any CDP project? Any answers? Don't be shy. Come on. Let's think. Let's see what we can what we can um, uh, find out from this talk. So uh, when I immigrated finally to the UK, the first thing that you have to do when you're here is to apply for this national insurance number. So that gives you the free, free healthcare and maybe a pension when you retire. Maybe, we'll see. Um, uh, when I first went to the office to get that number, um, of course I've given all my details, that's why uh, you know, the spelling came handy as well. Um, and two weeks later, um, I received a mail in a post. So the mail, uh, the envelope was addressed to me, of course, with my address. Inside that envelope, there was another envelope for security reasons, this time with some, uh, uh, some logos and official documentation. Inside that, there was, another, uh, there was a letter printed out, and attached to the letter was finally my card. Okay? Even though I had um, I've provided all my details and spelled all my names, Every single letter was with a different name. Everything was misspelled completely. By analyzing back then, that was 20 years ago, can you believe that? 20 years ago, I have analyzed this and I've deduced that there must be a process to that. By how progressively my name was misspelled. So first of all, you give your passport, then they send you, they, they print you the card, and, and then they print the letter, finally, the, the second envelope that was in, and the outer envelope uh, that um, came through the post, and everything gets shipped. However, because everything was misspelled, 
gammas have been devised by different teams. Okay, so every single person was just reading what the, the other person written and then uh, setting up uh, the, the chain altogether. Um, and you think that, okay, that was 20 years ago, that doesn't apply to my um, organization anymore because everything is digital. Yeah, so um, here is my email address. Whenever I try to sign up for any newsletter or uh, log into the store, of course my iPhone um, insist on capitalizing the first letter of my email address. I don't know why. I don't know how to fix it, even though I'm techie. Um, but when you receive an email from an organization or an e-shop or something, sometimes comes in as a couple of letters. Yeah? Those who use Cheetamel or use Cheetamel, uh, that was 20 years ago, know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay? But then it goes, the, the same email goes to the data team. And the data team insists that everything has to be lowercase because for consistency and all that stuff. Okay? And the web team is like, oh yeah, whatever. Yeah? He just put a couple of M, it's fine. Yeah? We don't care. And you think, okay, I can send an email and it's still going to arrive on my mailbox. It's still perfectly fine. So why should I care? Why should I care about the email address, whether it's capitalized or not? But the same rule wouldn't apply to your, po uh, to your password, would it? Because if you provide a lowercase or uppercase, then you, you cannot log in. And the same might not apply to your customer ID, because the customer ID not, uh, has to be very case specific, especially at key. Those two customer IDs will never be equal. You will have two different visitors. So what happens when, when techies get their hands on data and say, we need to do something about the data because it bugs us uh, and it, it causes problems for our databases. So the story just came very handy two weeks ago when one of the council decided uh, that they all want to remove all the apostrophes from the street names because it doesn't play with the database well. Yeah, because sometimes you have to encapsulate your data in quotes and that extra quote was throwing everything off. I don't know what kind of database they use, maybe Excel spreadsheet or CSV file, but that's not the way to go. Okay? So because what's next? Maybe we remove end uh, from the street names, or the dashes from the town names, or maybe there's uh, letters and numbers that um, shouldn't be there, or something is too long, or something is just in well. <laughs> On the last one, probably only the Welsh people and computers will be the only ones who who would be, uh, struggle with that name. Any Welsh people here? No, we're not going to test it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, another example, um, I got it from uh, my favorite brand where I do my groceries, but I'm not going to tell you which one that is. You probably recognize it by colors. Um, I received this, um, and it's kind of like really nice touch because they really care about Maybe I would be offended if there was a sensitive subject, so I may opt out from those emails. So, first of all, I know that the season is already coming, so whether this is a Father's Day or whether this is Christmas, I'm going to receive tons of emails. So, it's a great opportunity to unsubscribe. But then, on the second hand, it's like, if I'm already unsubscribing from something, maybe I'm just going to unsubscribe from everything. Yeah? It's a missed opportunity. So, should we. Um, collect this data as and when, or should we collect this data when you actually subscribe to something and not give the opportunity to opt out? Because then I'm unleashing another beast of me unsubscribing from everything. Um, what about uh, uh, subscribing to this or, or providing your preferences when you subscribe? or? Uh, having some kind of a form like we talked about the first uh, zero party data that you provide those informations at the time uh, or ad hoc what you want to receive that would be a better way um, so selecting specific events when you want to provide this data not when you want to opt out so out of all these pages when would uh, my email address be best suited to, uh, to capture it would be on newsletter subscribe or login page, not on any other event. So we need to be very selective about events that we want to uh, utilize as well. Okay. So out of all of this, I've learned years ago 
um, very important rule, which is called five W's and H. It's, it's about the questions that we ask when we do anything in tech or in math and whatsoever. We're very um, good at asking those three questions initially. So one H is for how, and then two W's are for what and where. These are the most common questions that we ask. But we hardly ever ask who or when, and we never ask why. Okay? And this is the problem. This is the problem for techies, because techies never ask, like, why do you need this data? They just say, okay, fine, I'll just collect it. And marketing says, okay, I just need this data be, uh, 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 because I want to do something. But why do you want to collect so much data? Um, that question is never asked. Out of all these numbers, these whole numbers relate to me. Who can tell me what they are? What do these numbers represent? These are dates that are very specific to my case. Okay, so I've asked ChatGPT to um, divide them in two groups. I didn't tell um, AI what these dates represent or any, any clues or anything like that. I just asked what do these uh, dates represent. So this was my prompt, uh, my prompt, prompt master uh, by now, um, and came with two very disturbing answers that my life result, uh, revolves around the global economic uh, disasters and, and uh, technology, well, yes, because I'm technology inclined. So that was the answer straight from AI. Um, while in fact, those two uh, groups relate to when I got a new job in red and blue when I studied something. Okay? So it, it, AI will never tell you exactly what the numbers are because it doesn't have the context of it. Um, what are these numbers, let's say? Who said that? What are they? Ah, good. I was hoping for the answer. Yes. So these answers relate to me again. <laughs> yes. These numbers is uh, total applications I've ever made, job applications. 11 successful applications, 7 jobs so far, um, 5 UK based because I work in the States as well, I've uh, been through 3 redundancies and 2 unsuccessful applications. So one of them was because I couldn't I spell my own name. Okay? And the context was because we previously talked about my events, my jobs. See? And that context is always missing. So with, um, with collecting the data, we started a long time ago uh, with analytics because we wanted to make sense out of what's happening around customers. Then there was a talk about big data because analytics wasn't enough. We were not getting enough data about our visitors. And finally we arrived at AI hoping that big data, because we don't talk about the big data anymore, this is like a taboo subject, it's gone. So AI, because we've got so many events, we can't really make any sense out of anything there is. And then, if you were to put your money on something, where would you throw it at? Would you throw it at AI, or would you throw it at the, at the humans? So at your teams, or artificial intelligence that would make sense out of it? Okay? Or maybe you would settle somewhere in the middle, where there's not a lot of cost, but you can make sense out of it yourself. So what defines the good quality data? Very often we um, look at the time, um, about uh, how re uh, when was the data collected, or when will it expire. Very often we, we look at standards of the data, and the compliance, which is very important. But we never look at context. Why? Why do we have this data to begin with? Why do we collect it? What do it represent and why, why we think it matters? Okay. Out of all these numbers, what could they represent? Another question. All the numbers, yes? Look similar? Sort of. They must find numbers. Uh, uh, talking about prime numbers, we always um, uh, look at patterns or, or, or try to find patterns as well. 
The same with all the numbers. We can look at patterns and time patterns. AI will do the exactly the same. Will give us patterns that are always there, but might not be relevant to our to our context. So with this, is it better to collect um, all the numbers on a, on their own, or is it better to represent what they actually mean? If I look at the uh, all this like this, what can I tell? I can tell you much more because instead of numbers, I see that that person has shop more in a, sh in a physical shop versus the web shop. Okay, so it means much more to me as a marketer than collecting just the pure order numbers. What about this order and all associated data? Very often customers um, of ours collect a lot of data um, and they insist on collecting um, not just order numbers but also what products have been bought what sizes, colors, and associated products, and uh, products to upsell, and so on. Is that really necessary to collect? Or is that something that we can pull using our technology from somewhere when we need it? Okay. So the collection is not always the answer. Um, so how the CDH, our uh, customer data hub, is very often used? Very often, uh, some data is being uh, lightly touching CDH without much of the um, uh, alteration and just connects to an endpoint, to an activation point. So it's one to one. So very often customers uh, treat CDH as a simple um, data bus. Um, and that's not really efficient, one to one connection. And you pay a lot of money for just one single functionality. Uh, sometimes there's a one connection going to one activation with some, something that alters it uh, in between, which is slightly better but still not efficient. Sometimes we're talking about and and when this, <laughs> you know who you are. Sometimes there's a lot of data coming in, a lot, and then. Uh, occasionally, it's being used somewhere else. Okay? Uh, some, someone just pulls it as and when. And sometimes that data just goes into the CDH and that's it. Just stays there in like a form of um, museum that you can look at it, but you cannot touch. Or you shouldn't at least. So volume of data doesn't necessarily mean quality of data. It doesn't mean flexibility. It doesn't mean uh, usability of data. You can just have loads of data points, just like we, we had the story about the, um, uh, about the big data. No one ever talks about the, the big data anymore, does it? Because it, it just was misleading that we can collect loads of data and then never use it for anything else. And that's not the way. So what is the best way of using the CDH? Okay, and this is what we are um, strategy, and of, of course our colleagues are from the engineering, from the implementation engineers, or, or support, and uh, even your customer success managers, well, we're trying to help you uh, during this whole process of or this whole journey with the CDH of CDP. Uh, the best way to describe how to use the CDP is to look at this diagram, always. This is what every single CDP in the world not just Ethereum should do. We should be able to collect from multiple sources. We should be able to standardize that data, remove duplicates, make it clean, and so on. Transform it with enrichments, so we can add up, for instance, um, uh, order values together and see how much you've spent uh, or your customer spent over a period of year. And then integrate it with different, different technologies and then activate upon it. Okay. This is as simple as, and Tilling CDH can actually support all of these. I dare anyone else to, to say that we can do this, uh, they can do this at scale and volume. Okay. We can uh, uh, activate on your data, we can connect it to different sources, we can create attributes and audiences, and also provide you with um, uh, uh, standardize your events and get your data sources. All of this is supported by measurements, so we can measure 
your effectiveness of your campaigns, but also uh, um, execute on the value so we can provide to the business uh, what brings the value uh, by implementing this use case. In a nutshell, it's always like this. In CDH out, this is my mantra all the time. As simple as, we don't want to uh, collect too much data, we simply provide something in, manipulate it, and send it out very quickly. Okay? All in real time. So how should the CDH um, diagram look like? For the techies and not for uh, and non-techies as well. Okay, that's not over complicated. But I always want to compare this to like a really uh, nice tube map. Okay, on one side we've got those all your activations with various states, various lines going to those activations for various use cases. On the other side we've got those um, data sources, those origin original stations that you come from. Okay. And then we can add some push methods to it. So we can use, for instance, functions to alter some data on the fly. We can also use functions on the way out to manipulate additional points of your data for different data sources. We can use pull methods like the data connect, which is an ad hoc or very quick one, uh, to pull the data from multiple sources. And you can also use API to pull the data from the CDH to your destination. <coughs> okay? So it's a very, very quick and easy way of describing this, this process. So going back to the original question, what should we look at first when implementing any CDP product? Is it data? Mm, not really. Through the measurement and the business value, we need to identify the use case first. And then the use case will contain all these different aspects, activation, connectors, audiences, and so on, which will describe what data needs to be ingested to support your data strategy. And then the implementation starts in reverse. You first start with the data sources to implement it, through the events to the activations. So your data strategy um, is supported by the measurement and value and your use case itself. And the use case implementation is the reverse process. Does that make sense? So what are the key takeaways? The first, the first thing is to work as a team. Your market is and your um, IT um, data teams and web and so on you need to work as, as a team. Just like we had the presentation about the center of excellence, you need to talk, uh, you need to up, upskill or uh, lower your tone of voice uh, to work together. Never trust the data um, and remember that volume doesn't necessarily mean quality. Prepare your data for AI by cleaning it up, use all the powers of the CDH, so all the different little functionalities that you can, and have a plan, as in use cases, because this is the most important to organize yourself. And how can support you with that journey? First of all, trainings. Invest in trainings. Equally marketeers, equally IT and um, developers, um, Look at the team university, uh, uh, get in touch with your CSMs to, to get trainers and upskill yourself. Second, data strategy. So talk to your um, CSM or talk to your sales representatives uh, about getting involved IEs and CDP strategies to organize your data strategy. Center of excellence. Uh, strategies can help you organize that within your organization. Data processes and architecture, um, I love this. So talk to me later on, we can organize something. Um, talk to your IEs if you still need implementation. And use cases, your CSMs and strategies will actually help you um, uh, creating new use cases or expanding on your current use cases. Okay. And 